Now it's really hard to see from here, but if you look under this sign with all these real estate agents on it, you can just see uh, the fence where the, the, uh, well, the construction of the uh, cycleway is going on. Now, I did see a question in a letter to the paper ages ago asking why were they building it on that side of the road when the only path across this bridge over the railway line is on this side of the road. What are we? We're on the northern side of, uh, of the bridge here. And it's a good question. There is no footpath of any sort on the other side of that bridge. However, the issue, the thing here is, if you want to ride from here up to Stirling Highway, there's a school right there. So it actually makes sense to put the path on this side of the road if you're going to service the school. Now, there is in fact some on-road bike laning stuff on that road. I've never ridden up it. I've had a look at it. And what there is of it, there's a hell of a lot of drivers driving into the painted bike lane. So I think that's a, a good reason why a separated uh, bike path is needed up here for kids, because I certainly wouldn't have them out on that road with the driver behavior I've seen today. Now, oh, by the way, uh, yeah, this, this path is obviously very narrow. So how are they gonna deal with this when they extend it? Well, I guess they're gonna do exactly what they did with the uh, Iron Coke Bridge, and they'll just tack a section on the side here, uh, you know, which is um, sufficient for uh, pedestrians and cyclists. You know, you can put a three meter wide standard, uh, you know, bridge across there and, and link it up, that'll be fine. Um, you know, that, that to me seems to be the, uh, the most sensible option. Well down past the end of that car park is the bridge that I've just come over and on the other side of that is where the Eric Street uh, path is. And you can see here, you know, there's a nice big uh, car park here that you could run a, a shared path through. I guess just by widening um, this footpath here. And I don't know, you'll probably have to mess around with this, maybe lose some parking. Now there is in fact a green on-road uh, bike lane through here but yeah I, I haven't tried it I don't know what it's like riding on it I certainly feel a hell of a lot safer sticking to this path apart from people uh, zooming in and out oh see that Land Rover that just drove past went right into the green lane as they went past and that, that four-wheel drive kind of cut into it yeah so as and that car too so as people are going through the uh, this, this island here um, Yep, yeah, they've cut into it too. Uh, it, it is a squeeze point to get around those trees. They cut into it as well. You don't have a hell of a lot of space there. Let me just record some of this. So, oh look, a sports car. They managed to actually stay in their lane. That's uh, one of the very few cars that's managed to do that. And it'll be interesting looking at it on the other side of the road as well, because I just noticed that black car went into the green lane on that side. They, they went through way too fast and cut into it as they exited. Uh, what are they doing? They seem to be okay. They came in too fast, out too fast, the Mercedes. They cut into it. So, how about this white car now? Yeah, just, just briefly touched it. That grey car over there on the exit went into it. That ute went in here. Oh, that white car managed to stay out of it. But of course, this car here is blocking my view of the exit, so... I think what you can see here is that people going around this island, they're going around it too fast. Even though they're crawling, they're still touching the line. See, they went through at about the right speed to actually stay out of uh, the green lane. But what, because there's no, whoops, because there's no speed cushion here to slow people coming into it, they're, uh, they're belting into it way too fast. Oh, they were in it. Yep, yeah, even before they got to it, they were in the, uh, the green lane. Righto, let's actually do a ride both along the footpath up and back and then on the road up and back. So we're going over the bridge here across the railway line for the first time. Never done this before. I've seen other people riding across here but never done it myself. It's not terribly wide and you can see it's quite old. It's an old wooden bridge. It's probably heritage listed. And you might be able to squeeze two bikes going in opposite directions uh, past each other. But uh, you'd have to be careful. And then we end up on a footpath, uh, which takes you to a roundabout. And as usual, if you did build a cycleway through here, you'd have the issues of getting across the roundabout safely. Now, I had absolutely no idea at the time that there was this primary school here on the left. It was a bit of a surprise. But once I saw the school, I went, ah, a light bulb moment. I can see why it makes sense to put the cycleway on this side so it services the school. Now, they've got a kiss and drive parking area there to the right. And I guess 
they'd probably have to lose a bit of parking, I think, if they were going to extend the cycle way along here. Uh, now, there are issues with, uh, what do you call it, hidden driveways or, or driveways with terrible sight lines uh, as we go past the school. And do you see that car just because it passed? So there's all this vegetation here, and that driver, even though uh, they're completely blind to the left and right, just went zoom straight through all that shrubbery without a care in the world, not looking to see if there was anyone on the footpath like me. So, you know, I was lucky they went through, I guess, five seconds before I got there, because, uh, you know, if I'd been on the footpath as they came in, I would have been um, flattened. You know, it was, wouldn't be good. But you can see here there's heaps and heaps of verge, uh, you know, to put a, a cycle way in in the future. And that's it. We've made it to uh, Stirling Highway. So, you know, that's the next extension. And although one thing I've got to say about this bit of verge on the left here, uh, a, a whole chunk of it seems to be sunken and it's probably used for uh, drainage purposes. So like a, a sump drain kind of thing. So you would either have to bridge across it, I guess, with the cycleway. So all the stuff here on the left, you can't see it, but it's uh, it's like a sunken sum. Uh, and here's the driveway where the uh, you know the driver came barreling out. And guess what? They were reversing it. See in the in the camera on the right hand side. Um, and uh, again, seemingly reversing without much of a, a care in the world. Um, so yeah, the the vegetation here, I think you know a lot of it would have to go to uh, you know, create a safe site. Oh, there's the sump there on the left behind those um, uh, those wooden fancy things. So, okay, we're back at the school and uh, the car park, and then this is where I stopped and filmed the drivers uh, going through or driving into the uh, painted on-road cycle lane. And when I uh, got down to the roundabout, uh, I thought, okay, I'll go home now. And then I went, no, hang on a sec. Why not, while I'm here, go back and uh, actually ride up the road and film it and see what it's like. So, okay, here we go. And look, it's not the best time of the day for filming because the sun was still fairly low. And as you can see, it kind of blows out the uh, the front camera. But interestingly, there is a very narrow uh, on-road painted bike lane here with no symbology whatsoever. There are no pavement markings that I could find on this side of the road to say this is actually a bike lane. The only thing that would make you think it's a bike lane is it's green uh, going through there and that color is usually used to uh, let drivers know that's uh, that's a cycle lane now thankfully there's absolutely no traffic here at uh, what was about eight o'clock on sunday morning um, which was good but i don't know what it would be like doing this uh, on a on a busy day particularly with a lot of parents doing school drop-offs i think this would be a bit of a shocker let's try the other side downhill this time and again no signage uh, on poles or anything saying this is a bike lane, no symbology on the road. So I thought, stuff it, I'm going to get out and go through the roundabout. And oh, whoop, we just went past a pavement marking at the start of that green section saying it's actually a bike lane. Right. Uh, okay. But look, going down the hill there, I would not stay in the bike lane given the driver behavior. I'd get out, take the lane, go through that pinch point um, in the middle of the road because I just... You know, I don't think it's safe. And and going up the hill, uh, would I really be comfortable in that lane? No. And I think this just demonstrates again, particularly around a school, why a completely grade separated uh, cycleways is required. Something with you know plenty of concrete that's going to keep drivers away from cyclists, particularly young cyclists, because as you know, just in that short video I, I shot. You can see how many drivers were just ignoring the paint and driving to the cycle lane. Anyway, that's Eric Street. That'll do.